Well, today I want to talk about uh, defeating pro-self. Uh, I'm going to use the example of David and Goliath. I think maybe a better title would be How to Come Out Ahead. And uh, so we're going to be in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17. <clears throat> we'll start with verse 4. And we're, gonna, we're not going to go over every part of, uh, of 1 Samuel 17 and the story. But I want to hit the points that, that maybe the Lord can quicken some things to us. Because I, uh, recently, and <clears throat> really it's been a couple of years now that the Lord's been dealing with us about pro-self uh, as in contrast to the lamb, <clears throat> how we treat one another and these sort of things. God knows we all need it. God knows I need it. <clears throat> so um, uh, we'll, we'll hit as far as we can go. All right, so 1 Samuel chapter 17. We'll start with verse 4 <clears throat> and uh, 4 through 7. And in verses 4 through 7, what we're going to see is the weapons of pro-self, okay? So, verse 4, and there went out a champion. Okay, wow. No pro-self there. <laughs> a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders, which I would recommend against that part. Don't put a target on yourself. Um, aim for the target, you know. Um, target uh, on his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And um, so in all of that, we, we begin to see <clears throat> um, pro-self. We see uh, he has built up this armor. You get, a, you get a, a, I think, even a better picture when you look at Leviathan in the book of Job. But certainly this is a good picture. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and to me, it's a good picture of the need for us to personally deal with that head, with that pro-self Goliath head that, that may be trying to run the show inside of us or something like that. So, um, and then verse um, 10 through 11, And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and, and greatly afraid. So um, it was, you know, Goliath was over there in the army. I'm sure because they're on one side of the mountain and then there's this valley in between and there's another side. I'm sure they could see him. You know, it's like he's the tall one, you know, over there. I'm sure they could already see him. But it was when they heard him, when they heard his boast, when they saw the, they, of course, when they saw the weapon and then they heard his boast, uh, then they really began to be afraid. And then uh, um, verse uh, 12 through 16, I won't read those, but basically it's a little portion that's talking about um, David and his brothers. And uh, I forget how many brothers he had or how many children Jesse had, but it's like eight or something like that. <clears throat> and... Um, and, and it mentions a bunch of those. It mentions three of them that are old enough to go fight. Uh, and, uh, and then it also mentions David was the youngest of all the brothers. And I think that's significant, too, because that's an excuse for uh, saying, well, you're not qualified or you're not, you know, you're not, you're too young to be pro-self yet. <laughs> and so... Um, Verse 16 says, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And that spirit, that headship of, of uh, pro-self will just be relentless. Just relentless. I mean, it's just, you, you know, you're not even trying or you're not even, you know, there's no effort. It's just there in us 
where, uh, and then we find ourselves, you know, saying or doing something, and uh, maybe the Holy Spirit quickens something that we just said or did. And um, gosh, you know, there's, there's a brokenness, but, you know, doesn't mean that it's all gone yet. Um, and so 40, 40 days, they had to keep listening to this day in and day out. And, and you know what? That, can, that relentless um, uh, intrusion uh, into our lives when we want Christ can be so, so uh, at, l at the least disappointing. I mean, it can be devastating to us because we're pursuing the Lord and we want the Lord. And, and I believe all of us do. But, but there's still that head that uh, has to be dealt with. So uh, verse 17 says, And Jesse said to, unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephod of, his, of this parched corn and these ten uh, leaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. So in these scriptures, they had, it had already said, and it'll say it again, um, that David had been the caretaker of his father's sheep. It's very important to understand that, that it wasn't just, he wasn't just a shepherd. He was a, take, a caretaker of his father's sheep. And um, uh, this, is, uh, this is just another extension of that. His father goes to the youngest, goes to David, and says, here, take food for your brethren. I mean, it's, you know, it's feed the older ones even. Um, and then verse 19 through 21, it says, Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. Okay, one of the things, I'll read that again, but one of the things that will follow in these several verses is going to be the fact that Goliath, for 40 days, has been coming out every day and, and challenging them to give, give uh, him, the Philistines champion, their champion, and one-on-one -on -one so they can fight. Okay. And that's uh, mm, that can be that can be the trick of the devil. Can you, you believe that to get you one on one with him, you know, and uh, and clearly, uh, you know, nobody was going. Hey, I'll do it. You know, they're all they're all in fear and dismay and uh, and run and hide at certain times. The scriptures even say so. But I want you to notice this wording here. Now Saul and they, by the time David shows up, Saul and David and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines, plural, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight, okay? So this is not this is like war now. This isn't just two guys against one another. And shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array. Army to army, it says. Okay, so what's going on with that? Um, nobody wants to fight the big guy. I mean, we will spend our whole life picking, you know, trying to get the little guys out to so we can have some victory. You know, and uh, and we do. We'll, we'll focus on. Well, we'll go. Well, I'm just, I'm just a kid. You know, like David was. I'm just a youth, um, or whatever. However, our approach is. But we tend to go at what we we think. Well, I can handle that. Well, it's not. It's not based on what we can handle. It's based on the Lord, and David proves that. Not based on what we can handle. Not based on our prowess and military strategy or any of that kind of stuff. It's based on the Lord, but not just ethereally the Lord. And that's what I love about this story is that it gets into the specifics that make the difference. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, uh, and as he talked with them, talking about David talking to him when he got there, behold, there came up the champion. Oh, okay. So even they're setting the battle in array <laughs> and Goliath's, Still coming back up and going, hey, I need to talk to you guys. Send me just one of your guys. 
and, and trying to just scare the fool out of them. Uh, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Now that's different because the other verses says the army of Israel heard them and were dismayed and greatly afraid. In this case, it says David heard those words, and uh, David heard them, period. <laughs> Just, you know, it didn't say David heard them and went, you know, you know, uh, maybe somebody should do something or whatever. No, no, no. He heard them, period. He heard what Goliath said, okay? And all the men of Israel... And when they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid. Now, that didn't include David, but that was all of the military. Sounds like Ukraine is Goliath or something. Anyway, sorry. So uh, David, David hears it. Verse 26 says, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Okay, so, so the wording is different now all of a sudden. The wording, when everyone else talked about it, was the armies of Israel. David, David calls Israel, not Israel, but the armies, not just of God, but of the living God. He's got something. He's got something living. Okay. All right. So, um, and that's significant. We'll see that as we get down in further verses, how significant this is. The mindset of David as opposed to the mindset of literally everybody else in Israel, all the fighting men, all the people that should, you know, that have been trained for war. David was never trained for war. Oh, Maybe that's the way to defeat pro-self. Not to get stronger. Anyway, let us move on. All right. So uh, my title for this next thing, which is verse 28, uh, starting with verse 28, is another giant attacks. Another giant attacks. Okay. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard... When he spake, when David spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David and said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left with those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. All right. Now, let me just, let me just give you a little picture here. If you're struggling with pro-self or you're struggling with a, a giant as a head and you've heard stuff he said stuff and done stuff and you've gone you know you haven't freaked out yet you haven't lost you know anything you're still kind of with the lord and then somebody on your side you know somebody in your side comes up with pro-self and starts saying negative stuff towards you that can really deflate you. That can really bring you down. Um, uh, so I put af after uh, the giant attacks, David, after two giants attack, now David keeps his focus. Mm. Focus. Hallelujah. In verse 32, um, David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. <laughs> He's seen this after Goliath and after his own brother attacked him personally. Okay. Um, uh, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy, thy servant will go out, thy servant, not thy, you know, hit man or, you know, great man on any front. Thy servant will go out and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go up. Okay, here we go. Here's a third giant. Because Saul's a king. So that's going to impact your biggest brother, your oldest brother, the king. 
this giant that's just huge. It's like, <laughs> just roll up in a ball and go, I can't do it. It's too much. You know? Well, let's see what David does here. <laughs> um, uh, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight for, with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. All right, thanks for those words. You know, thanks for the pep talk. <laughs> uh, you, you've, you know, you've thoroughly discouraged me. I won't do it. Okay, we'll just give, give up to the enemy. I won't. Yes, O king. You know, yes, big brother. No, verse uh, 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb. There came a lion. And then later there came a bear and they took a lamb out of the flock, out of God's flock, out of my father's flock out of the flock, and I went out after him. <laughs> Don't you like that wording? I went out after him. I think I'm probably going to go over a little bit today. Is that okay? I mean, or we could just stop there with, I can't take this. <laughs> you know? Okay, so there comes, so, but they took a lamb. They didn't take a bunch of lamb. They took a lamb to destroy, to eat it, to feed off of the weak, the weakest. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of the mouth, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Okay, so imagine being this close to a lion. <laughs> they have big mouths, you know, you know, and instead of freaking out or whatever you just you shouldn't have taken the lamb try to you're trying to take the lamb out of me and i'm not you see that there's something strong now in the weakness you're trying to take the lamb out of me and so when he you know he he smote him when he had the lamb and i'm sure the lamb got away but then he turned on him and he said, uh-uh, nope, no, no, no. Uh, you're not going to take the lamb away out of me. So, um, and when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncir uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he had defied the armies of the living God. Seeing, only because he's seeing. He sees, not, he didn't say, he's, because he's come against my team. Didn't say that. Didn't say, because you came against my brothers. He said, just like he said to the fly, you a bear and you lion, you have come against my father's sheep. Specifically, a lamb. And, you know, uh -uh. So then when this big old Goliath comes, way bigger than a lion, way bigger than a, a pigeon, <laughs> a bear, um, to him it's all the same. Not that, you know, the creatures are the same and therefore... Da -da -da. They're not, they're not the same. There are varying degrees of danger. What is the same is whatever's my father's, whether it's earthly or heavenly, God will be with me if I put him first and his interests and his lamb. If I put that first, and we'll see that in, the, in these scriptures. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna be with him. I'm gonna be with him, and I believe that he'll be with me. 
But we'll see why he can believe that, though, okay? Not, it's not just based on the, the how many things you've killed. Um, and again, the armies of the living God. So verse 37, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear shall deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. There it is. There it is. He says, I, I slew him, da, 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 da. but now he's saying his true source. The Lord delivered me. I delivered. He literally said the word. I delivered the lamb out of the mouth of the lion. David said, I did. But here he says, but the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion. And the Lord delivered me out of it. Why? He delivered me because I'm, you know, it's like if you, the Lord will say, if you'll, you know, if you'll take care of my family, I'll take care of your kids or family. You know, you have a family, but I have a family. The Lord says, I have a family. If you'll take care of them, I'll take care of yours. Okay. So, um, and then he says, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Now, there's absolutely no question in his mind. Okay, now he's going to give us, he's going to give us a reason here why there's no question. Okay, so that is verse 38 through 39. And Saul, Saul armed David with his armor. In other words, everybody in that army was probably armed in a similar manner sword or spear, they might have bow and arrow differences or whatever, but they're armed in a certain, um, maybe even, maybe even pro self way. I mean, they're armed, you know, they're armed for battle. Okay. Um, and, and you, as you know, David is not going to be armed for battle. He's going to be armed for protecting God's flock, his lamb, uh, his gods, the army of the living God, but it's not with those weapons. So we see it. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a, a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David, David put them off. Oh, man, that's just so good. I'm sorry. That's just so good. He's not going to go, you know. Well, here, here, brother, here, sister, try this. You know, this works. You know, read this book and this will work or whatever. You know, there's, some, there's something to be said about all that. But the truth is, nothing's going to work except what you've proven personally with the Lord. Hello, I didn't see, hear an amen. Oh, yeah, your, your thanks are not on. Okay, um, so, um, gosh, my thing just jumped. I get so excited about the Lord. Um, yeah, because I don't want to get too far down here. Okay, so... Uh, the, I wrote down, these things work, these things work, but they must work for you. In other words, David had been practicing. It worked on the lion. Not enough. It worked on the bear. Okay, now you're, now you're getting familiar with what works. All right, so... Uh, verse 40, and he took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, a shepherd's bag. He put them in a shepherd's bag, <laughs> you know, not a, not a bag full of grenades and, you know, ammunition and all this kind of stuff. Uh, where's my shepherd's bag? Uh, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Okay, so 
That's it. I mean, if you're if you're anyone else in that army on either side, the 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 side of Israel, you're going, oh my God, we're going to lose because if he loses, we're all servants now for the Philistines, and he's going to go like that. What, nobody got a bazooka. What is this? We need something. No, no. And then the and then the Philistines are going. All the all of them are going. We're not going to have to fight at all. We're going to so slaughter them. You know, it's like a football team that has won every game going up against the underdog. And we're going to so slaughter them. It's going to be crazy. We'll put our third string team out there. <laughs> well, I only need one. So. Um, I wrote, we, they were weak weapons, but they were also God weapons based on this, what I've said. But stand up for what is God's, and he will make your weakness work for you. See, God didn't give him stronger weapons. He made his weakness work for him because his heart was already with God. In other words, his head, David's head, was already with the Lord. It was filled, not just his head. I'm just using the example of a head because we know what's going to happen to Goliath. His, he already has a head that's full of experiences with the Lord, that's full of the Word of God, that's full of all of this, this stuff, and he's got the right head going into this battle. So, I think instead of going further in the story, because I think that's most of the most important part, I'm just going to read you a few things. Uh, I want to read Psalm 23 to you. This is David. The Lord is my shepherd. That's I don't know about you guys. I have somebody who's going to take care of me in this battle. That's what he's saying. That's what David's saying. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk, and I will, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For only one reason thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, whether it be lion, bear, or Philistine. Thou anointest my head with oil. And he did through Samuel, the little shepherd boy. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I, I just a few little notes. David was young. He was not a soldier at all. He had meager weapons. If you have the Lord and your heart has been with him, proving slowly but surely, but also being there for what his heart's concerned with, his sheep, the army of the living God, his army. Um, so he used, and this is important, David used his weapons to protect the sheep, not himself. That's what's so, so precious about the Lord is my shepherd. Because he didn't use his weapons for him to protect himself. He used them for the sheep, and God saw to it that he was protected. Um, and then, by being lowly, David had spent years relying on another head. Mm. Take the head off of your pro self. Take the head off of Goliath. Take the head off of him. He is pro self. But without those years of practice, David would have done what Israel was doing. 
measuring their ability and weapons by Goliaths. And everybody does it. They look within themselves. They look at the enemy. They look at the problems. They look at all this. And it's just all way too much. It's all, they're, they're so vast and everything. And, and then we start, you know, uh, uh, measuring what we have, our weapons, measuring what we have by the giant, by the pro-self. And we get afraid. We get afraid. We want to run. Uh, and I wrote, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Hearing the truth over and over will not be preparation enough. You have to... You have to put into practice. And you say, well, you know, it didn't work that time. Well, have you ever done anything, anything, any sport or anything, and it didn't work the first time? Okay, well, it didn't work the second time. Usually we can go four or five times. You know, we're, but get it in you. The Lord will do it if your heart is, I want this for you, not for me. I want this for you to protect your lamb in me. And I want that pro-self mind of, of Goliath's head, headship, to be severed from me for your sake, not for my sake. And when you get to that place, the Lord will be your shepherd. The Lord delivered me out of. The Lord delivered me out of. The Lord delivered me out of. But I delivered that lamb out of. See, it's a, there's a real flow going on there. Anyway, I hope I didn't go too long for some of you because I know you, you're used to getting off at a certain time. So let's, let's pray. Father, we all are like the army of Israel um, when Goliath is talking to us and we shiver and we, we get doubtful about our condition and ourself and we feel hopeless and but but lord you're you're speaking to us of things very simple things actually not not deep not so deep that the average person couldn't reach in and partake but they are those simple and weak weapons they are extremely important the condition of our heart for ourself or for you above one thing or the other the practice of finding what works for us and being with you in it and the reality that when we stand for you the things that your heart is as important to your heart then you will deliver us so thank you. Your loving kindness is better than life. You are more than precious. You are so special to our hearts as we proceed to know you and grow together, all of us, one body, one heart, one mind, one Lord, one Father. Together we come, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. All right. Again, thank you for letting me be with you. And thanks for all the prayers when I was sick. And um, continue to pray as I seek the Lord just like you are. And in areas that I want the Lord and I know that you do. So let's hold on to one another as we proceed in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, God.